Okay, good morning. I would like uh, people to choose a UFO. Um, yes, UFO. Yes. Okay. So, who wants number one? Okay, number two. Number three, number four, number five, number six, number seven, number eight, number nine, number ten, number eleven, number twelve. Okay. Um, which one do you think is gonna win? Twelve. Wait, what are we doing? Okay. Alrighty. So, what is happening here is you are summing the two dice. Okay. So Stephen should win. Okay. What shape is this distribution? Triangular. Fantastic. Why do you? Why is it triangular? Straight. Yeah. Okay. I'm just going to move the winning line a little bit closer. <laughs> I want number seven to one. <laughs> My distribution is not looking very triangular. That number six is Come on, seven. Come on, number seven has to win. <laughs> Come on, seven. <laughs> okay. Okay. So. Yeah. Okay. Um. Alrighty. Um, guys, just to be boring. I'm going to go through this bit manually, okay? Okay, um, so we've got one of the dices, one, two, three, four, five, six on one of the dices, and one, two, three, four, five, six on the other dice. Here, I'm going to equals this plus that. And for that formula to uh, work for me, I want it always to be on the uh, what do you call it, column one, so I'm going to put a dollar sign there, and always to be on row A, so I'll put a dollar sign there. So what I'm doing there is doing a whole lot of additions, okay? And then I'm going to conditionally format it so we can see the pattern. Maybe like that. Okay, so what's happening is we have got um, one plus one is two, so UFO number two would go. Uh, four plus two is six, so UFO number six would go. So if I have UFO number one, it's never going to move. Two, three, four, five, six, um, up to 12. Here we go, that was a good guess. So how many um, times does two happen in that distribution? Once, so that's going to work. Uh, the probability of that happening is one out of thirty-six, because there's thirty-six possible outcomes. Oops, one out of thirty-six. Okay, so this next one, number three. How many of uh, those is there? Now, what's the chance of three winning? One, two. So there's um, two out of 36, okay? And what's the chance of four winning? Three out of 36. What's the chance of five winning? 
four out of 36. What's the chance of six winning? Five out of 36. What's the chance of seven winning? One, two, three, four, five, six out of 36. And then what's the chance of eight winning? Five out of 36. What's the chance of two, three, four out of 36? And 10 is three out of 36. And 11 is two out of 36. And 12 is one out of 36. Now, why does this look triangular? Uh, that's got the probability of 1, that's got the probability of 1. This has the probability of 2, that's got the probability of 2. This has got the probability of 3 out of 36 all the time, but okay, but proportionally. 1, 2, 3, 4, the next one, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, the next one, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 out of 36, 5 out of 36, and 4 out of 36. So the shape of the distribution is the shape of a triangle. Okay, it's not a normal distribution, it's a triangular distribution because they have that shape. Okay, so the winner over many, many trials would have been 7. Okay. If you were um, allocated a UFO, you would be lucky person to get seven, all right? So normally, it's gonna be very strange for three to ever win, or, you know, 12 to win. Does that make sense? Yep, maybe. Right back to the beginning here, where I gave you this simulation. Remember we did that? So we could have that one dice, and if we did that for like a, a 10,000 rolls, we got what sort of distri distribution? Rectangular, okay. If we do the two dice, we get triangular, and then when we got three dice, it's starting to look more normal, and by the time you get to five dice, it's, it really is a beautifully normally distributed Thing. Okay, so all of those distributions we will be looking at. So we are on page 140 of your Sigma workbook, and you've got this picture here of a triangle, and the triangle has an A, a C, and a B. Okay, um, the line where the C is is not drawn. Okay. Now, it's a probability density function, and the density function itself goes da -da 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 -da, zero between A and C, this line, straight line, between C and B, that straight line, and after B, back zero. So as a piecewise, it's actually got four parts to it. Okay? Now, we know that the area of this triangle when we're talking about probability density functions is the area of that triangle. Remember with our rectangular, what was the area under? One. one. So if that area is one, how do we find out our height? So I know that the base is B minus C is my base. Okay. B minus A, thank you. And my height is H. So we go B minus A, yeah, times height equals 1. So height, oh, no, half. Half base times height equals 1. So H equals 2 over B minus A. Okay? Because times both sides by 2, the 2 came there, and then we divided by that. Make sense? So in the book, you've got that there written. I get rid of all of that. 
it's actually got a height here of the 2 over b minus a. So there's nothing kind of fancy about that. It's just area of a triangle formula. Okay?